Coming up, we're going to make fun of Oliver for about an hour until he learns how to spell properly. I'm just joking. It's 2017, so we are going to start the year off by comparing and contrasting, not contacting, as Oliver has spelled it, Universal and Disney. So, live from the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal edition of the Diz Unplugged. No, it's not. Not today. Today it is. This is episode 111 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hey everyone, welcome to... Again, this first episode of 2017 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, Craig Williams, and I am joined alongside by Rhino Glavin. Hello. 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 Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday, you. yes. Oh, thank you. January 1st. January 1st. Yes. It was, yes, my 28th birthday. That's inaccurate. <laughs> <laughs> but close enough, right? Fifth annual 28th birthday. Yeah. Fifth annual. 30, 32. Is that? No, nope, fourth annual. 28, 29, 30, it's, 31, it's 32. His age it would have been the fifth. Out. It would have been the fifth. I, I don't want this to be the second Diz Unplugged episode this week that has brought up uh, Mariah Carey. But that I was, you know, she has a reality show on E. No, I did not you did know not? that. No. Yes, yeah, she has a reality show oh on Oh, my now. God. Is she going to address the situation? No, I don't know if she's going to, but uh, Kylie and I were watching something else on there, and then it started to transition into it, and it was all about how uh, they were planning her birthday party coming up, and her like assistant is on there saying, Mariah doesn't like to celebrate what we would call birthdays. Instead, she likes to celebrate her anniversaries. <laughs> so... Huh. Well, we, well, Eli is older than me, and we always have this joke that we – every time I invite people. So this year, it's going to be Eli's – his 10th – no, I don't know, ninth or 10th annual 30th birthday. Oh, his his eight, cause his ninth because he's turning 38. But we always – the invitation is always the mm-hmm. annual 30th birthday. Yeah. yeah. Well – I think that's fun. Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate thank, you being back. Oh, thank you. So, um, oh, I'm talking just... like the pig from Sing. I'm sorry. Oh. I, we, I saw it with my nephew. And so every time I say, oh, I'm fine. Thank you. Well, that's universal related. Is, so yeah. do you think they'll make it a stage show? What do you think Sing will, will have? What Sing related thing will be at Universal? I don't know. But as I was watching the movie, it feels like it's almost built in there. There's an opportunity built in there. Maybe if it's like a turtle talk situation. Do we want to introduce the other person? Thank oh, you. he's no, he's he needs to stand back there and think about what he's done so yeah, far. You're gonna, you're gonna hate me. There's more to come as well. So you didn't, yeah, don't worry about it. We're all good. We're what, all good what's not out. what's not there? Don't worry. Nothing, okay. nothing that uh, needs your attention this moment, and nothing I can't fix. So okay, well, happy birthday to me. You've so, ruined everything. <laughs> okay, well we will. We'll bring up Sing in a little bit. Then I guess we'll we'll circle back around to that. Back on the controls. Eating soup? <laughs> Literally. Eating soup, right I guess. Right when he's about to introduce him, he puts a giant spoon of soup in his mouth. Hello, everyone. Oliver Green. I am here today as well. Not doing the best job I've ever done, but... Soup on the brain. It's the uh, first show of the year. Start as you mean to go on. So, yeah. What's, I didn't understand what you were saying. Yeah. I, said, I heard the first, first show of the year. Start as you mean to go on. the first show of the year. Start as you mean to go on. I don't think I've heard that expression. Right. It means it means start start off doing um, a good job, and then carry on doing a good job. But well, you, I think see, things I can like only how you started. Point, you started honest. down here, so we can only go exactly, from here. Yeah. Right? I, I, I like to set the. Yeah. I like to underpromise and overachieve. Yeah, so. see, you're just you're just easing your way in. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, That's set fine. the bar low. Yeah. In my defense, the space bar wouldn't work. I was smacking it, and nothing was happening. So. <laughs> We've all had that problem every once in a while, so. I guess now, and since I've introduced the two of you, I will say Happy New Year, and uh, I hope everyone's new year is starting off. I'm not saying that to you guys. I'm saying it to everyone out there who's watching and listening. We have missed you uh, while we've been gone, and we hope you uh, you have um, 
Yeah, you had good holidays and you're ready for another year full of whatever this is. You are emanating the color of the show today because you're wearing that blue shirt, but there's also like a blue light that's being caught in the window. Yeah. And then your Dodgers hat. And no, so it's the, all kind of like, there's it's the not just that you're right blue, there, but there's the like a mist dreams. around you. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's a lot of blue. So the hat's just because uh, we're, we it's were like listening to TV it all show, all morning, though, uh, while we were doing the daily fix and stuff. I'm mm-hmm. I'm just like on that La La Land kick right now. So Craig, yeah. Craig thinks about the, I'm wearing uh, my La right here. The mise-en-scene of the scene, I believe, is the correct The mise-en-scene, yeah. The mise-en-scene. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so, um, no, I am very blue. Double D, double die, double D, double die, double D, double die. So, um, yeah, hope you had a new year. We're gonna have a very fun episode today. Um, we are going to. It's the first annual Grino. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I've been told. Oh, there we go. I've been told the first annual Crinos of 2017. I know that makes no sense, but the Crinos don't make sense. That's the whole point of the Crinos. Really and um, if you're upset about it, go Crino me a river. Oh God, no! I, I there was something there and I lost it. Uh, but speaking of the Crinos, we are going to adapt and change the Crinos to add on. Uh, the member of the team who hasn't been here since we've done a Crino. Have you been here since we've done one? I no, not no. This is your first, first one. Yep. Crino, so you did. And we will. We've we've changed the name before, and we will change do it again. Um, it's now going to be the Crinoverse for 2017. Uh, as as long as you're here. So if we're you leave, where, it's going to really screw stuff up. Yeah. I, <laughs> Anthony, if you're watching this, we need new shirts. I, I put on my shirt today because I was going to wear it for the occasion. And then when my nipples were just protruding through the shirt, I was like, I'm mm, going to go for a bit of a thicker shirt. Yeah. And well, it's not so thin. See, my, yeah. and mine's on the thicker one. And it, because it's in the nicer shirt, they gave more room. So it doesn't fit me quite as well as if we, we should have just swapped shirts, I think. Uh, I, I'm fine with it. I'm happy with it. I love the shirt. I would have wore it, but I'm feeling self-conscious it's after the new year i ate a lot of cheese so is that a thing or just by just like I, that's what you do during the holidays you eat, eat a, cheese. Lot, a lot of cheese you yeah. do cheese so i discovered apparently Publix makes what they call like a cheddar monterey spread with it's their version mm. of pimento cheese and i ate like two things of that i made a, a queso dip for mm. new year's eve i drank like 20 bud lights on new year's eve and i didn't just trying to hydrate huh it's it's like water it's what you drink when you're trying to hydrate (laughs) really a long night of drinking i need to sober up get me a bud light like that's that's how i feel like you are so i'm i'm feeling a little bloated today just to get personal with you guys but you're not here to hear about our problems you're here to listen about universal but before we get there i do have to say one thing that we are very excited to announce we were supposed to announce it on tuesday during the disney world show we forgot uh because we're human and that's what humans do but i am happy to announce that we are going to start taking video contributors on the disc oh. i wish you had the angel sound like queued up with the uh. so um th- this is very exciting for us uh just because uh over the past year we really stepped up uh, what we're going to do in sharing our adventures in the parks and stuff with all the blog, the not blogs, sorry, the vlogs. Vlogs, yeah, which my phone um, still doesn't recognize as a word know, for some reason. Right? Uh, we've. It's 2017, Felicia. That's what I call my phone. It, it should know at this point, but we have been, um, we've been vlogging up a storm and. It's some of the most popular things that we've been doing, uh, and we know that there's a lot of people out there that also are wanting to get interested in vlogging and yeah. kind of capturing not only their vacations when they are coming to Disney or Universal or anywhere, but uh, maybe even the planning process at home. Maybe uh, just they need a way to vent about tips something's tri- happening, oh, yeah, yeah. tips and tricks that they might know. Vent like, oh my gosh, this news just came out and it's driving me insane. Any Anything. Uh, we, don't, we don't know what we what video contributors might be able you know what would be cool? to give to us. The way you just worded it to me, it sounds almost like it eventually could evolve into sort of like how the Diz boards is like, we start this thread, and it's kind of like, yeah, I said tips and tricks, you said venting about news, but it's kind of like somebody starts at the topic, and you're just like, 
you give your two or three yeah. minutes piece on it, and then we kind of, I don't know, I like the idea of how this can splinter out and, yeah. s- and seeing it through other people's eyes, you I, know? I mean, here's the deal. We, we know all of these people out there love us, and I don't want to say that. And, well, we, they don't love all of us. I mean, a lot of people hate see me. See what the chat says, right? A lot of people dislike me, but, um, <laughs> you know, we, we know you guys love all the personalities that we have in the group, and that's why you watch and you continue to tune in. Uh, but... You know, it starts to get old when it's just us over and over and over right. again saying the same things, doing the same things. Uh, we want to know what else is happening out there. And so that's why we want to start accepting video contributors. So uh, video contributors, what we do? Well, first off, uh, after the show is over, we will be sending out links to where you can sign up to be a video contributor. Um, you know, going through all the standard form stuff, giving us your name, all that. A video submission. So if, if you know how to, uh, if you already know how to vlog or do creative videos, anything like that, you have some that you want us to look at, whether it's a YouTube channel, Vimeo. Uh, if you need to use Dropbox to send it over to us, we are accommodating in all of those ways. Just get us a link. If you don't, if you're not sure on how to really uh, video, you've never, never done it before. Um, d- don't be put off by that. So we can also work with you uh, and teach you. Right. Rhino constantly teaches Tom and Mary Jo from <laughs> yeah. three thousand miles away. So if we can do that, we can work with anyone anywhere. Just, um, yeah. Mary Jo's tip of the day was: be careful about how you film yourself eating a hot dog. So, but like I, what I, you know, to encourage people, I didn't vlog before. I, it wasn't like a thing yeah. I was doing before. I was just kind of like, oh, our phones can do this. Oh, we can edit on iTunes on the phone or or iMovie. I'm sorry. I, wow, it just sounded like my mother. Yeah. Um, the, like uh, we can edit on on a, on the phone, do it on the fly, and I was like, oh, this is a fun tool to make these cute little vignettes, yeah. and then they kind of turned into something else. So, just it's just kind of like. Practice makes perfect. Yep. Just just give yourself a topic and, and try if you're even yep. interested and then go from there. You know? Yeah. So uh, we're very excited to do it. Um, if you are chosen as a contributor, then your video will go on, oddly enough, not our Diz Unplugged channel. That's for us, the members of the Diz Unplugged. Uh, but you would get to be featured, uh, your videos, on our Diz channel, uh, youtube.com slash WDWinfo, which, uh, you know, it has forty, close to 44,000 or maybe more than that subscribers. Lot, yeah. So not a bad. Your, your face is going to be out there for a bunch of people. Um, you get paid for it. Uh, if you go, if you're interested in signing up, you can see on the forum how much you would get paid if your video gets published. Um, and you know, we we don't know how far this can go. We don't well, know what wanna, we're going to see. Uh, right. And I I want to say, um, some of you guys out there have sent me, um, emails, um, because like it somehow like did Diz Pop related or something. But somebody recently sent me a slew of photos from um their trip to like Universal. Um, I think they were in Japan mm. and. You know, I'm just thinking, like, you could even take something like that, do a Ken Burns effect, and just tell us about your trip to Universal yep. Japan with those photos. That would be amazing because we've never been there, yep. and I don't know much about it. So, like, stuff like that would be great. You know, and people have been like, oh, do you want me to send you videos of this? Like, why don't you yep. tell me about it? Exactly. So, we are very excited for it. Uh, again, I will make sure the information is out there. We're going to have it on uh, Diz Unplugs, uh, all of their show notes well it'll be in the show notes it'll be yes it'll be at the show notes disunplugged.com we'll be sending out links through the universal social media as well as disunplugged and the dis so it'll be out there if you need uh any like if you need to figure it out more you can always email me craig at wdwinfo.com or send it to uo podcast at disunplugged.com if you're really lost and you can't figure any of that stuff out again you know Always go to the home, disunplugged.com to find that stuff. But yeah, we're, we're very, very excited about it. The reason why we are happy to announce it on the Universal show first and foremost is because we are specifically right now looking for people who want to help us with Universal content. Yeah. Um, uh, that, uh, that being said, it doesn't have to, don't like feel like you're shoehorned into submitting a video that isn't you know, solely based on Universal, that's going to help us more to understand what your style is. But, uh, you know, we 
again, we, we're not sure what we're going to get, so we don't want to put any boundaries on it. But specifically for the first round of uh, contributors, we want people who want to share their passion for Universal, uh, Orlando, Universal Studios, Hollywood, anything Universal. So that will take priority that we will <laughs> eventually open it up uh, to, you know, Disney, Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, Adventures by Disney. Ev- we'll see how far we can take it uh it could go beyond even that disney entertainment if you're a cosplayer stuff like that we are not we're not setting any boundaries on it so um that is out there so i hope there are some people out there who are excited about it and would like to contribute and we look forward to seeing your videos especially i'm looking for couples that's what i want to say i I know there's some good couples out there that are huge fans of universal that go all the time and it's nice when people can play off each other so that's what that's what i want to see personally so yeah any any theme park crazy couples out there i know you can do it but i like the video this idea for me is great because it almost gives the illusion that we might it might free us up to like explore more even more creative videos our own just an illusion but you know i mean i know i know were enjoyable to some people, but we might find the next who's popular. What well, YouTube famous? Po- yeah, Shane Dawson. Sure, we might find <laughs> him. Um, we might find the next Kelly Shoes. Oh, who's the girl? Shoes, who's shoes. The the, the bum girl. Let's get some um, shoes. She's got dogs. She's got dogs. The girl no, with very dogs. Pretty. Yeah, very pretty. It'll come to me later. Wait there. What's her name? name i feel like someone's going to tell me in the comments i don't know okay you're here muttering your mom's on here asking about the next john Roberts. Earn, are earnings taxable i i don't know what's happening mother <laughs> get off of chat unless you're talking about universal studios we've been over this oh my god shoes. more than once please get off of chat unless it's to do with universal thank you okay. so much so are are we ready to jump into 2017's crinos we we sure are. Are we? Oh. Unfortunately, we are not going to do that just quite yet. I want to start us off with 2017, not talking about what we know is happening. I want to talk about the unknown. Oh, Jenna Mm-mm. Marbles. I hate Jenna Marbles. That's it. That's who I was thinking of, Jenna Marbles. That's yeah, the one. she's mm-hmm. terrible. Yep. She's the worst. Well, I like her. She does a radio show that makes me want to scratch my eyes out every time I hear it. So scratch your eyes out blind. for a radio show. <laughs> Very good job. Well, what are we definitely. talking about, Craig? Very good. I want to talk about. I want to talk about rumors. I wish. I, I wish we had a sound, sound for, rumors. for rumors. Dang yeah. it! Da, da, da. Well, we played that Lindsay Lohan's. I'm sick of people talking. So, um, <laughs> the song's called Rumors. <laughs> I just want to talk about two of the ones that I think are very prevalent. I think two, uh, both have some importance in terms of 2017 because if the rumors are true i think we will definitely be seeing something along with it in 2017 so i want to uh start throwing them out there the first one i'm very excited about um we were leaked this information gosh probably all the way back in september or october i can't remember when Um, but I'm sure some of you saw over the holiday break here, uh, it was passed around a lot from Orlando Informer uh, about a projection show happening on the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Oh, yeah. On top of Hogwarts Castle. I I don't think I was reading it on our site. It wasn't on our site. Okay, somebody did the compare, the photos of what the landscape used to look like at the castle and what it looks like now. And Dunn's very quiet. The reason I the reason I can't I wasn't able to post about it is because someone who works for our company, I am not going to mention names, but has someone who might or might not be in the landscape department for (laughs) Universal and was on that on that project. That's not the case. Yeah, I know. But um, (laughs) but yes. So we've known about it for a while, but obviously for protection, we can't. Take the I chance think this that is, I I am I am if it's what I was reading about the rumor and stuff like the projection show on the castle and the yeah I am super excited yeah so um I guess the landscape and horticulture department was told that the reason they were taking the plants out was to make way for a projection show on Hogwarts Castle so as it's been done uh, multiple times uh, with the grand opening of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter they did uh, something similar as well when it opened up in Hollywood out there and uh, this 
is exciting to me in a in a way, I guess. Um, the the one thing that I am scared about is capacity. In terms of, it's a very small area that would have good viewing for this show. Did you read? Okay, because the rumor I read is that it was going to be. Um random yes that they wouldn't advertise the time and they would have like one show that's bigger than the others or something i understand understand and i i still think even with just one show alone i be clogged up but that is a way to protect it but we already have seen what happens with that at animal kingdom with the yeah. tree of life yeah that is i mean it's that's on a timed loop it's not completely random but instead of what I mean, I talked to Joe Rody and heard him talking about it. No, no, no. We don't want people standing here and just just watching it all night and seeing it. It needs to be more of that thing. You're you're going to walk by and randomly it's just going to come on and you're going to see the tree light watch, up. Yeah. And you're going to want to stop and watch. And then when it stops, you're just going to kind of walk away. And what did what ended up happening? Well, the t- yeah. Jungle Book sucked and everyone just ended up standing there watching it. And, you know... It, it was such a big area there that you could – it wasn't super congested. But, like, if you wanted the prime viewing spots where you could see everything clearly, it, it got really uncomfortable. You yeah. had to you had to kind of wait out someone leaving so then you could move your way in. Uh, Hogsmeade is already busy enough, even when it's not busy there. Uh, the bridge to get to Jurassic Park, people are constantly stopping to take pictures. Uh, you know, at night, things do slow down. But I can only imagine the congestion of that entire area if people are just standing around waiting for a show. I mean, even if it's not epic, there's nothing currently happening at night in Islands of Adventure. Yeah, that's true. There's nothing to draw them away to a different area. So it's just it's just the only thing that happens right there. Yeah. So I just I I love the idea. I love the potential. Um you know, it, it makes sense for Universal to get onto projection mapping and all that. Because, uh, again, look at Disney. That's literally their end game right now. Every single park has been project, projected mapped on at some point or another, whether it's projection mapping on the castle, yeah. projection mapping on Spaceship Earth to make it the Death Star and look really bad, uh, projection mapping on Great Movie Ride for Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam, one of the most depressing holiday shows to ever come around. Uh, tree of life it's just it's constantly happening so it makes sense for universal to get in the game too it's incredibly affordable as well so not only does it look for the most part it looks good you know more times than not the projections look amazing and in that area they can you know they're going to be able to do a lot with it so i don't know i think it's going to fit in well it's just like you said it's just going to be crowded which uh, is going to take away from it the other hard part is um is the how late Universal's yeah. actually open, Islands of Adventure. Um, Especially in the summertime. In, in the summer, you know, the park closes at 9 or 10. So it's dark, but it's not extremely dark. Yeah. Uh, and even during slow time, you know, it's if there's not an event already happening in the Wizarding World, uh, then usually the park's only open till about 7. So it's, it'll be dark for a solid hour. But how many shows can they run in an hour? Are they going to start extending the hours to accommodate for this show and all that? I, I just, I, I don't know. Um, but I'm, just, I'm happy they're trying. Yeah. I'm happy they're trying. I, I think it if they get everything in place and it works and it's a good show, they use the right music cue. It's Harry Potter Harry music. Harry Potter music, yeah. It, it's, you'd have to like pick the worst songs in order to screw it up, like Dobby's theme. <laughs> but yeah with friends <laughs> um what is so, it, it, pete always doesn't go, he even was making a joke about dobby the other day and he didn't say dobby and i didn't want to correct him um because he was talking about the dog and he's like what i that happened with me as well oh and i didn't want to correct what him, is like, he what does he call it thing. but he's done it before uh, he's done it to me multiple yeah, times like since was... i've known pete he's never referred to dobby as dobby he's like oh there's gary the house out like it's not it's, like that it's, it's gobby. Like, gobby gobby okay he always says so. gobby and it always makes me laugh because i'm like it took me a second because i was like who is gobby do i know a gobby <laughs> like <laughs> it's just funny to me i love when people say the names slightly wrong i don't, I don't know why i don't you know it just i say names wrong all the time i don't care rhino clavin yeah yeah and someone just pointed it's out not my name. Uh, <laughs> if uh if <clears throat> 
if they are going to do a projection show, there is a good chance maybe it will be either done in time for the celebration of Harry <gasps> Potter or be announced for that event. So, which is one thing that we will be talking about in the compare contrast coming up uh, a little bit later with uh, the Crinos. But that was just the first rumor of something that I wanted to bring up and mention because I think it's it's definitely worth mentioning. Um, st- again, it hasn't been announced yet, so that's why it's still a rumor. Um, but Orlando Informer went out and said they had heard about it too. We have firsthand information from people that it is going to be happening. So um, unless they all change their minds and realize that it might be a cluster with traffic, I'd say we're going to see it. The next one, I don't know if we're going to see but my sources are now telling me that we may be seeing most of Kid Zone closing down mm. by summertime. I wonder what at for. At the studios. Ooh. At Universal Studios. Wait, I studios. wonder what for. What is it for? It's quite clearly for Nintendo. That's my guess. But no. Yeah. yeah. That makes more sense. I thought, oh, there? so we don't think that Nintendo will go into its own little I, park anymore? I had that feeling, but... The last time I talked to someone who had any potential information about it that could be credible enough to mention, yeah, uh, they said that what they were being told is that in the next six months, parts of Kid Zone would be closing down. So I'm guessing once Volcano Bay opens up mm. and that starts taking capacity away, um, because uh, Racer New York with Jimmy Fallon, or starring Jimmy, whatever the heck it is. Fall on uh, Ride. Fall on Ride. Yeah. Hashtag Fall on Ride opens uh, up very soon. Um, they're saying spring, but I think it'll be open up still technically in winter. Uh, but yeah, once Volcano Bay opens up in the summer, that would be the time to pull the trigger and close down another section of the park. And let, let's be real, that... that might include animal actors. It should include animal it actors. Should. They need to a day in the that. park with Barney doesn't need to exist anymore. Fievel can go. Just keep keep E. T. because E. T. kind of backs up right beside um the NBC uh media center that's in the Garden of Allah. Uh so you know that that can all still work together. That can all still be rethemed to Hollywood. They'll have to kind of mess with the SpongeBob store. But all the rest back there can start to be demolished in order to make way for Nintendo uh, and take up some of the area back there mm. uh, on the same patch of land where Gosh, they I'm have sad. some of the parade uh, the parade floats stored at as well as uh, some of the trailers that they use for um, development and uh, team members to, to work in as well, well as... Well, you know what? They could also always do how they did it with Harry Potter. You know, Harry Potter's not confined to one theme park. So just because oh, yeah. this, if that just so that could be Mario World, and so whatever the next Nintendo expansion is, that could go in another theme park. Yeah, they no, could I, even do a thing where they move it over to Islands of Adventure too. You know, yeah. Oh no, we we talked about it, especially if they were going to go like full blown Yoshi. That might that might work for Yoshi Island, but um, I and in terms of the attractions that may go in terms of Kid Zone, I don't know any information on that. Um, I just was told that parts of Kid Zone would be Gosh, don't removed. touch that E.T. I, I don't think they can take don't it. Don't touch it. I don't think they can take it. It's still a popular ride. Yesterday when we went past it at a 45-minute wait, Yeah. Um, which was heartbreaking. It wasn't after four, so we couldn't use Express. It was not. It just made me sad. Well, it makes me sad, but I like that as well because it means people still, you know, there's yeah. a love for it still. So I'm okay with it. As long no, as it's is. only every now and again. Yeah, no, it, e- E.T. needs to stay. E.T. Yes. absolutely needs to stay. Um, it's not, you know, when Jaws was, we've, we've already, we've lost Jaws for. <laughs> 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 Perfect. Um, when we lost Jaws, you know, everyone was sad. There goes this classic attraction that we would have loved to see for life. Well, you know, when there's, when Jaws is popping out of the water and spraying people with hydraulic fluid, that's not something that you want to keep around. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a joke. <laughs> that's that's not one. Um, but ET, you know, with it's with a couple exceptions here and there, it's basically pretty easy in order to upkeep and maintain. Um, the capacity isn't terrible, and it it still has it still has life in the park. So I think that that still does need to stay. Um, and I think it's all it's already been a year now since we lost Beetlejuice. 
Rest in peace. I'm so sad. I miss my Beetlejuice. I do like now that you do see Beetlejuice like now you've roaming, said it three times. We're roaming. Screwed. Okay. We're screwed. <laughs> I like that you see him roaming the park now, so you, you can meet people a bit more than you know you used to when the show was there. So at least he's still there. He might not be doing he's his graveyard review, but he's still there in spirit. Oh, uh, mm, the Juice Man, talking OJ. Simpson. No. <laughs> I think that's where he was going. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, those are the two rumors that have popped up on uh, on my radar since the last time that we oh, have my. been here. So, that is that. But instead of focusing on what may happen in 217... In 217... <laughs> It's like a, you're becoming part machine. Instead of what might happen in 2017, let's talk about what's actually supposed to happen in 2017 mm-hmm. and do it as comparing it to the comp- comp- competitors, competitors, the competition down the street, Walt Disney World. Let's talk about 2017 in this edition of the Crinos. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool beans. Okay, so let's go through what is happening this year in 2017 at Universal as well as uh, select events at Walt Disney World. I'll already putting together this list of kind of the, the important things. Um, my goodness, Walt Disney World actually does do a lot of things throughout the year. Not just events, but... They are, they're opening up a lot of new restaurants this year. Are they? Um, a couple things here and there. Yeah, the one... Um, Playing in Hollywood, yeah. Well, yeah, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that, that and Paddlefish are going to be delayed another year, unfortunately. And a new hurricane has come through, yeah. <laughs> uh, causing delays. Uh, not the fact that Guy Fieri is <laughs> going crazy in the kitchen of Planet Hollywood, just Pulling chopping his up wi- the- his wig every time. <laughs> they don't it's have crazy. enough of my hats to buy in the gift shop. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they dyed his hair like that? Or it just a These are front-facing sunglasses, not back ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's uh, doing. So, uh, but no, the 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 polite pig. I'm excited for that. Uh, the oh yeah, I am excited for that. That was supposed to. Like, that, was that already supposed to open, or is that just taking its time? It's taking its time. It's it's still on track, I barbecue, believe. Barbecue, right? No, um, it's the quick service cask and larder. Oh, so well. The, no, I, I couldn't remember why I was. Excited, now they now they've closed Cast and Larder, and they've essentially made it the same as what's the original? I can't remember. Um, oh, oh, fudge! I always forget. I always larder. forget. They're, they're just some local like restaurants. Yeah, these are super, these super are good. Winter Park awesome uh, yeah. restaurants. The, the good stuff. Um, Ravenous pig. Yeah, that's why. That's why it's the polite pig. Um, I was getting it mixed up with Pig Floyd. So yeah, that's happening. So that's that's coming to Disney Springs. That's good. Um, But we just don't care about that. We care about a lot of stuff. I wonder if they'll have the drinks they made in there. Sorry, that's Cask and Larder was also the beer. Yes, they're keeping they're keeping the beer, the uh, brewery, and the uh, the cocktails. Oh, awesome! That happened there, but. the menu will no longer be different than Ravenous Pig. Ravenous Pig might have closed, too, and taken over that spot. So it's all together in one section. I don't know. That's not what this show's about. If anyone's interested more, please head over to Winter Park, Florida. It's not part of Orlando, but it is still right outside you, of Orlando. If you're going to go anywhere outside of here, that's like the place to, to and go don't, if you like cool, cool places. Don't go up there and say you're in Orlando. If they live there, they will take it personally. Mm-hmm. It's Winter Parkians. It's where then, Mr. Rogers went to college. That's Rollins. Yes. Yes. Right? Mr. Rogers went yes, there, right? He went there. Yeah, okay. I thought you were about to say that's where he lived. That's not where he lived. No, but he went to college. Yes. There. I'm yes. glad we cleared that up. I, I am glad we did too. Cool. For all sweater needs. <laughs> For all your Mr. Sweater Rogers. Needs. Fred Rogers. Okay, so let's start this one off with January. The competition. Are we ready for this? Who are the competitors of January? We have, representing Universal Orlando, we have a celebration of Harry Potter 2017. (laughs) And then over on the Disney side, event happening in January, we have Epcot International Festival of the Arts. (laughs) Okay, so what do we know about a celebration of Harry Potter 2017? Um... 
well, it's shockingly enough for the fact that it's going to be in like three or four weeks from now. Crazy. We don't really know anything. I was just about to ask you. There's like no celebrity announced. There's been like two. We we know Warwick Davis still, and, and we know Matthew Lewis. Oh, who, is, do we not know if Luna's coming? Nope. Those still are the only two celebrities we know that have Matthew been Lewis officially is announced. coming because his fiance works yeah. there. I was going to say, I thought it was the event where the actors come down and scout Universal Orlando employees for potential <laughs> for green cards. Yeah. So. <laughs> Warwick Davis is happily married. Thank you very much. A Harry Harry Potter <laughs> male yeah. and bride situation. So. But he might as well just move uh, to Orlando in general. He'll be back for um, for Star Wars Celebration because he's uh, the host of that now. Is he the so, host of it? Yeah, wow, he's the okay. host of that. Um, We're going to that too. Yes, we are. So, But Harry Potter, Celebration of Harry Potter 2017, that's where you get to be immersed in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter um, outside of being in Hogsmeade or Diagon Alley. Of course, there's fun events that happen throughout the weekend like uh, the wand combat with paul harris in his orange weird jump British suit if he's not bringing the jumpsuit jump suit. and uh you know seeing the designs behind mina lima hearing whatever I guests like do show up nice. doing q and a uh we've talked about it we've covered it every year this year will be nonetheless happening january 27th through the 29th however over at epcot Something else that will be happening, especially that weekend, will be the Festival of the Arts, the first one they've done, mm-hmm. uh, promising art, food, festival festivalness, Broadway stars. Like Disney Broadway stars. Disney Ashley Broadway Brown. stars. I yeah. told you she was going to come. Josh Strickland. Mm. Do you not know either of those people? Um, I know as one of them. I Ash- know the, the, Ashley the Brown's cast. the girl who sings. She's like... She would be. She was Mary Poppins in Broadway, but she was like, she's always singing with Richard Sherman all the time now. Oh, okay. Whenever there's a thing that he's written and somebody needs to sing it, it's her. She so. sings the Kiss Good Night at Disneyland. Sorry. Oh. So uh, you know, part of this is as as Universal fans, uh, we need to be open and honest. When people are coming down for vacation, maybe they're they're here that week. Um, when Celebration of Harry Potter is happening, not not to see the event. If you're here coming to see a Celebration of Harry Potter, and that's why you're you're on the way down, uh, you know, don't don't go changing your plans. But for someone who's just like, you know, oh, I took this vacation and now I'm getting lucky. Celebration of Harry Potter is happening. Festival of the Arts is happening over at Epcot. I want to go to both places. Which one should I do? Who will win? Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. And why? I don't know. I like Harry Potter. It's hot. That's that's a not it's a loaded question, but that's very hard to say because we've never experienced. Festival well, that's of the literally Arts, what so. this entire thing's going to be about. So get it's, ready for loaded questions. Great. Just going from <laughs> face value, I would prefer personally. I think Harry Potter, I, just because it appealed to me mm-hmm. more so than maybe the Broadway people at Epcot. But well, I feel like there's more. And not to say that Broadway doesn't have this, but it's the Broadway, the people who are coming here, they're going to sing a set list of whatever. But like with Harry Potter, there's this whole mythology to dig yourself into and, and like history oriented with it. There's a lot of fandom servicing stuff over there. So it just it works better as a package situation. Mm. Whereas like the Festival of Art, I love that it's there. I haven't, you know, obviously we haven't been to it yet because it didn't start yet. right? Yeah. But but um that I like in the sense where like it'll have the kiosks up and about. It's that one's more like the cherry on the top of the Sunday that is Epcot, you know. See, Whereas Harry Potter's like, ooh, another dessert. Well, see, I love you know I love me some Harry Potter. I know, but you don't like this event, do you? It's not that I don't like the event. I don't know if it's relevant enough anymore. Um, I need to see. I need to have an announcement of who the other celebrity guests are going to be. Sure. Even though I haven't seen fantastic beasts and where to find them uh i feel like it's almost an insult to harry potter I would if they don't pull someone in from that and start incorporating that into it um and you know i'm sure in the expo there is going to be fantastic beast stuff but i in my opinion there needs to be panels on it uh i i still haven't seen it i've never been interested enough into it mostly as i've criticized very openly i do not like eddie redmayne the man just whispers his way through everything he's ever been in in 
frankly, he's extremely annoying. Uh, I'm sure the way many people out there feel about me. Um, At least you don't <laughs> mutter and you finish your sentences. Why does it sound like people are like the animals and I don't know why other people want to kill the animals? What made it red mane? What oh, I will man. say about that film is, I like obviously I can. They deal. Didn't scream. I thought you were about to scream to finish the line. No, sorry. no. I, 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 I can't tell what he was saying. I oh, movie. I like the movie, but there was parts of it where I was like, "What did he just say?" And I'm oh, used you're to British. This. Exactly. Yeah. I'm used to hearing that accent, and I was like, "Come on, speak up, man." That's the, that's the only thing is that it's like I get that you're like timid and I don't know. It's it's one of those like for me, I like I enjoyed that movie quite a bit, but he is the weaker of that part of that movie, and I, I, we could talk about that for more. Create life. <laughs> um, Do you know I who just, can't talk about it? Eddie Redmayne. <laughs> I just don't like him. But that being said, I would be interested. I even if I haven't seen. A, I haven't been to a celebration of Harry Potter before. Haven't seen these panels. Haven't seen any of that. This information is is out there. It's been done and said over and over and over again in interviews, pushed around the theme park world. Um, you know, chances are if you're watching this show, watching others, you've seen some of these clips before about the stars talking. Uh, it's just at this point they're just repeating the same information unless there's new celebrities or they bring in stuff from the new movie. Uh, so. I'd actually have to downvote this one, and I would say if you only have the choice of going to one or the other, I would recommend skipping a celebration of Harry Potter in terms of that. But luckily, this is a democracy. Sound effect. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. This, this is a democracy, so a celebration of Harry Potter would take this Crino Award. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, a celebration of Harry Potter is not here to accept its award. So we will just have to move on to the next category. And that is, as I've lost my notes here. February. And that is the next big one. Uh, another one that's starting to scare me here. Uh, let's say you're down for coughing. Sorry, sorry. So this one's going to actually extend out a little bit more. I'm going to talk about the next, the next events that are coming up. Because it is coming quicker than we thought. And that is Universal Mardi Gras versus one that we have attended also many times, Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival. Mm. Oh, okay. So when does Mardi Gras start? February, you said? Mardi Gras starts on the earlier side, February 4th to March 24th. So there's just a couple couple weeks. Well, that's what I I looked up today. Uh, Last year, the acts for Mardi Gras were announced on January 5th. That's today, Greg. That's today. And it didn't it didn't happen today. And I've been just refreshing Universal's blog over and over and over again, hoping that something comes up. Maybe I should just check their website to see if they like secretly put it on there. Um, but we don't know. What we do know is that Mardi Gras has changed up. Instead of only being on the weekends throughout its run and uh you know culminate with having the parade with the food and then culminating in a concert now the parade is going to run every single night from february 4th through march 24th 2017 and on the weekends there will be the main headlining act still coming uh so really in this regards if you're not coming on the weekends where they're actually performing then you're not going to see like the the big important parts of Mardi Gras, mm-hmm. like the the good stuff. I don't want to say good stuff. That that kind of belittles it. But, um, but yeah. And whereas, uh, let's say you're down again. This is all with the hypothetical of you can only do one or the other. Oh, mm. All the one or the other. On the other hand, you have Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival. So just to, uh, be brutally honest with that. If you've been one year then everything's going to remain the same. If you've been to food and wine, they're so little different that everything is still essentially going to be the same. Uh, However, I don't want to, with that, Mardi Gras is also an event that, unless they change up the parade, which they do every couple years, uh, it will essentially be the same. And last year, I believe they changed up a couple floats. It might have been the year before, but most likely it will be the Even same as it has been. if they don't change that flo- the parade, though, the concerts alone are always incredible. I, I mean, Adam Lambert, I've seen there twice now. And I didn't even like Adam Lambert before I saw the concert. And then I was like, oh, you know what? I'm actually into this. Now I get it. I didn't like him when he's an American Idol. Oh, yeah, I get it now. And... Um, <clears throat> 
I'm like, I'm a fan. So I went out. I went alone. Like nobody was around. And I was, I, I normally wouldn't go by myself. But I was like, I don't want to miss this concert. You didn't. And he put on quite a show. And <laughs> Kelly Clarkson, she, she's, she was always phenomenal both times I've seen her as well. Yes. Um, yes. Um, but Kelly. you know what I mean? They're, these are like, what was the big one this last year? It was, um, fa- was it Fall Out Boy or was yeah, it? Yeah, it was Fall Out Boy. It was Fall Out Boy. Um, and like, they're, these are like bands that are, maybe currently on tour that you pay quite a bit of money almost the price of the admission of the park i'm sure just mm. to go see that concert a follow boy concert i'm sure you're paying like 75 to 100 bucks i'm just assumed they've signed to universal that's how they get the big names is that how they do it or do they no. actually want to play no i think sometimes they do want to they're like they just want the smaller audience. we just want to or oh. well i think they come sometimes they're like well i'm gonna go on vacation yeah, yeah. So uh, a lot of like, times okay well, you can the, work and come for free that's we'll like you up in the um, hotel we'll let you around bare naked ladies they love going to theme parks, yeah. so that's part of a, a reason why they want to go around. Uh, they, they love going on attractions and stuff. So, mm. um, yeah, I, I think it, it's that duo deal. Some people take the gig because, well, playing a free concert at Universal to, to a really big crowd, even when it's like the worst people, uh, country artists. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll discriminate like that. I don't like country music. Um, Blue jeans. I, no. Get the no, I do, shit out of here. I do, enjoy, I do enjoy a good pair of blue jeans. but Tractors. Um, yeah, no, I'm not. Put on a hat, <laughs> put a piece of thistle in my mouth, beat my wife, and it's a country song. Oh. I hate country music. Sorry. I don't mean to offend anybody. Yep, you probably just did. But you went there. <laughs> um, That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> fantastic but yeah i uh i'm even on nights when the acts aren't super popular there's still always a decent crowd a lot bigger than maybe if you know you had to go out and pay your own money to go see them instead of just including it right in a ticket um but i i've said it many times on this show i will say it again now in this context i think that the mardi gras parade is probably the best parade at not just Universal, <laughs> but also at Disney throughout the year. It is high, high energy, high fun. Beads, beads, beads everywhere. Beads, ever beads, beads, beads. beads. It's, it's perfect. I love the parade. Um, I, I wish I could see a real Mardi Gras parade, but I think I would probably get divorced because of what is happening. Oh, he's flashing yeah. us for beads. Bean. Yeah. God, that was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> for behind the scenes footage to log on to our patreon site where oliver will take his top off for yeah beans. <laughs> uh that was that just i i had a cup of chili before we started and that just ruined my lunch thank you very much oliver appreciate it you're welcome thank you um yeah i i would love to see the real mardi gras i'm happy for the time being though seeing this one my vote goes if you're down during both of these events and you can only do one not both Mardi Gras all the way. I think it's got more of a... Uh, no, I don't want to say a party atmosphere, but it's just got more of an atmosphere. The Flower and Garden is very much like... It's relaxed, and it's an all-day kind of thing. Like, there's a, t- times at Mardi Gras where it's, like, very pumped, like when the parades are going on, when yeah. people are throwing out beads. But, you know, it's... I, I, that's where my vote would go as well. Yeah. So. Well... Doesn't matter what Rhino says. He's too busy defending himself on the country music front. <laughs> yeah, sure am. This is still... <laughs> sure am, Tim. This is still a democracy. So, in this terms, Universal Mardi Gras wins this Crino. Unfortunately, Universal Mardi Gras is not here to accept their award. So, we will move on to the next one. Oh, that was your foot. Um, was it? Tappa, tappa, tappa. Tappa, tappa, tappa. Kylie actually asked me if we wanted to take tap dance lessons. <laughs> you said yes right oh yeah so, sure no i of all the types of dance that you could have been asked to do she asked if you wanted to do tap land well i guess is it because of la la yeah. land okay yeah. Yeah, okay that's not, okay when i'm thinking of tap that's not what i was thinking of so that's why i'm like i i told her the only conclusion i said i already know how to tap dance you need to learn and then when you're ready we can tap dance together <laughs> I don't know how to trap dance. I could fake it. I'm pretty good at that. Just put a lot of tacks in the bottom of your shoes and wiggle your ankles. No, I'm just <laughs> learn from Miss Vicky. A tap, a tap, a tap, a tap, a tap, a tap. You turn that smile, turn that frown upside down. That's a smile. We'll work on it. Oh, um, <laughs> so 
Where's my list at here? There's the next one. So um, we are going to now kind of go off path because we don't know exactly on dates on when these are going to open, but we can take a ballpark guesstimate on it. And that is in 2017, we will know we will see the debut of two things. One is at Universal Studios Florida. The other is at Animal Kingdom. No, I'm not talking about Pandora, the world of Avatar. I'm talking about the show that has been riddled with problems after problems after problems, <clears throat> Rivers of Light. They're saying summer? Versus Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon. The thing that I potentially don't know which one I will dislike more. I think I'm going to dislike Jimmy Fallon less because there's a dancing panda in the queue. <laughs> Okay, so, so so let's let's go over it my vote. in case people are just uh, just hearing about either of these for the very first time. <laughs> uh, race race through New York. I need to learn the name finally. I look at the sign every single time I go past it. Isn't it race through New York? Is it? I just don't starring know if it's Jimmy with Fallon. or starring Jimmy. Is it race through New York starring Jimmy Fallon? Okay, it is the starring. Um, this will be a. Another another simulated attraction of the uh, type of flying varietal where you are taking part in one of Jimmy Fallon's apparently famous uh, weird car races that he does on his show. Again, I don't I don't watch it. I, I oh, can't. is the is that what it is? Is that that's the cars kind of the, the idea that you're you're taking part? He does the race thing on his I show, right? Against celebrities. I don't know that. You don't, I, I've you don't seen watch the do, show either? Well, you know, the lip sync battle, obviously, and like yeah. the games he plays, like the the Lion King. Well, apparently, stuff, he does. Someone like come up with this. It's like weird car races or something like that that he does. And this is going to be kind of a play on that, you know, you're, you're with that, this, that, and the other. I think the only uh, interesting aspect of this entire attraction of note is going to be the queue and the shopping area. Um, Going over there, being able to see the progress now that some of the construction walls are down. I, we took how many pictures of it yesterday? Probably should have had one yep, or two ready had to go one. with that. <laughs> um, that's that's my fault. I was too busy eating chili before we started the show. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the the progress on it. I will say is very very impressive to me. Um, Right now, the main part that we can see is the mostly finished outside section that is the NBC studio store. And then just slightly looming above it is a taller building with it is the Comcast section. And uh, right now you can see inside the shop, which they are currently in construction mode on it. It's very, very clean on the inside, but they are finishing up uh, before they start putting things on shelves and is, such. Is that So I've got a question. Is that actually meant to be the NBC studio tour? Um shop because i thought it was meant to be where they do like the morning news show thing just to the left of where rockefeller Center. well that's that's going to be a shop you can see where they set up the cash register counters and stuff oh okay oh but no that's what it, i meant that's what it's meant to be modeled after i, like, the I have said it in before in in new york is that what you're saying are yeah. you talking about the nbc store where you can go and do the the tour with the pages and stuff like that right? yeah but not the one in doesn't i'm getting the way the tree goes up i think you're overthinking this yeah i this, am i am Okay. I thought it was going to be a simple yes or no question. Yeah. I wish I never said anything. Yeah, I, I think you're overthinking it. It's literally just going. It, it looks like it's in New York. I'm, I'm sure it looks like something. I've only been to New York once, and it's been many, many years. So I'm sure that's all changed since when I went. Uh, I need to get back again. But no, no, no. The, the NBC, the glass thing you're talking about that goes around the corner, that looks like what the store looks like where the tree is, where they put up the tree and the, the skating rink. Yeah, the Rockefeller Center. Yeah, it's the- that's what the NBC <laughs> store in New York looks like. This um, is exactly what the store looks like. Give him a kiss. No. <laughs> um, so I, I, I don't. For me, that's what I thought it was supposed to. That's I'm with you. I thought the store of this looks like the store in New York. He sees it. I'm holding on for your life. The table is going to move. I hope the chair breaks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for all the listeners out there, they'll enjoy that. It's so, for the prize matron would have been great. You could have hit a chair breaking noise and they wouldn't know. We're yeah. also confused with life. Um, but honestly, I am really digging the exterior of the building. It's looking awesome. 
fancy. Um, oh, all the weird Jimmy Fallon poses that have been on the construction walls since it started, they have all been removed. It's a black wall. Uh, the this um, the sign of him is up. It's been up since I think we did our last show, but it's all coming along full steam. Uh, hearing, you know, I've heard a couple rumors here and there where they're pushing for uh, to be open by January, the end of January. Really? Um, others, that one or just from people who heard other things i've heard other ones where they're saying officially they want to be open by march and spring break um but again <laughs> when you start putting uh, well kong opened really really early too didn't it didn't nah, it oh no, no no it opened a little early and then they just never had the official opening yeah for a while it's because of things everything. yeah um i <clears throat> i i I'm, i will stay as objective as possible when it comes to the actual attraction itself. I just can't stand Jimmy Fallon. Uh, and conversely, Animal Kingdom, the other thing we were comparing it to, which, I mean, one's a show, one's an attraction. So, I've heard the other one's Pizza just so pie, boring. Pizza Pie, Yeah, Rivers of Light. Pizza the, Pie, what was the other Pizza thing? Pizza Pie, I, that I, I don't know. I think I might have said <laughs> Predator. I don't Pizza Pie, a Predator. Predator 2. Danny Glover, um, so <laughs> Club Soda. Pizza I, I said, pie, I'm so say? lost. Club Soda. Um, <laughs> that makes more sense. Uh, I, I don't. I, I'm losing losing faith in Rivers of Light. Every once in a while, uh, every once in a while, when you hear an update about, oh, it's getting closer for people to see it, oh, then cast members see it, half of them think it's the greatest thing ever, the most beautiful, touching show, the other people think, okay, well, it's, you know, it is technologically impressive, but it didn't have that wow factor. I think both Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon and Rivers of Light both will bring the technology spectrum uh, to, to a good level, but which one will impress more? This is a tough one. To me, it's like picking, do you want a poop sandwich or do you want a crap sandwich? <laughs> Which one's the poop? Which one's the crap? Crap is the river's light? I don't know. That's for you to decide. Personally, <laughs> I think I would go for... Um, I'm leaning more towards uh, Jimmy Fallon, Fall oh, on okay. Ride. I and this is because I'm, I, I, I always tend to prefer attractions rather than shows. shows. I really That's just a personal thing. And I think that um, Rivers of Light is going to be so unbelievably disappointing just because it's been, you know, hyped up for so long. There's going to be a lot of disappointment in there where people are just waiting for it and it's going to fall flat on its face. And if that's what you're saying, where like cast members got to prove you and 50% of cast members think it's good and 50% means think it's bad, that normally means it's bad because 50% of cast members will think anything's good. So they're the people that are going and they love every single Disney exactly, movie yeah. they ever see and and how it's oh, everything Disney ever does is a spectacle of an achievement. They won't when you speak when you've the worked company. there like we all have, you see those people that are like brainwashed and that's, you know, it's fine to be a fan of something and then say like, "Well, they yeah. didn't do it well." But I agree with you. I I look more I'm looking forward to the Jimmy Fallon thing more. I was it hoping, seems more exciting. Yeah, I was Plus hoping the panda. <laughs> The panda. Hmm. Interesting. I don't watch the show, and I'm still more it's excited. It doesn't for matter. It. It's a dancing panda. Oh, okay. Th- that doesn't excite you? No. You're just not into pandas like me. Isn't there a dancing panda in The Simpsons? Right. Isn't that? Doesn't that dance? That panda in there? Well, there is a panda. Okay. The head gets knocked off. Oh yeah, that's it. So, um, and for me, I'm going to take the alcoholic's choice on this one. I'm allowed to have a beer with me while i am uh while i'm watching rivers of light so rivers of light wins <gasps> i had visions of you on an attraction like <laughs> trying to skip like. it, it pulls into the gate the cup's empty but craig soaked. <laughs> okay well it, it, it's great but, but for the for that reason okay so we're gonna take a tangent here we only have one le- one left uh if jimmy fallon i guess wins crinos for this one Woo. yesterday uh <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag the dancing panda. That's it. That's it. Somebody, uh, thanks, Keith. I forgot his name. It's sexual harassment panda. His name is Hashtag, and he's a panda. Sexual harassment panda. Um, sexual harassment. So, yesterday, we, I believe, no, we didn't do a vlog on this one. I am going to do a write up on it, but uh, Shrek is still going through its, um, its testing the wait times. Dude, oh, the wait the time, time return that we talked about. Uh, the, the return right, tickets. Did they give you a thing? Yeah. They, they didn't give it to us. You do it through the app. Or oh, you, they have Kies yeah. set up that you can get um, your return time on there. We did it through the app and tested it. And, you know, 
to test it, you actually have to go through and do it. So it was our first time uh, experiencing Shrek in a long time. For me, it was probably four years. So in terms of saying like, oh, being on something shaking, then <laughs> holy crap, Shrek is terrible. Four, four years you haven't done? Yeah, every time I go on it, I'm like, oh, I'm fine. And then you can hear the <laughs> of the, the seats, that of the hydraulics that you're like, oh, dear God. You know you're going to hear the crunching of a human body that gets crushed from it. Like every, time, every time it starts like, okay, we're, the horse is moving again. <laughs> and uh, Hydraulics oh that are like sound like they're from some sort of printing press from the 20s. It's like, just cut away, <laughs> cut away. I can't do it. Oh, my God. Gosh, I thought you remembered. I thought you remembered how bad it was because there was a crying child, and Craig just looks over at me and goes, "This isn't going to end well before (laughs) the attraction starts." I I I guess I just didn't remember it that much. I remembered it from, uh, you know, I I have in my mind uh, the Captain EO Theater at Epcot. That oh, the little it does the little like the little bounce. Yeah, those were all together in like one platform. This I forgot that it was individualized seats. That (laughs) yeah, (laughs) and every time you're like, okay, we stop, we stop. Oh god, they're moving again. Like in my head, like I remembered it as doing it once, like as a shock thing. But no, it no when the 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 carriage runs and then they're like, we've stopped for one second. (laughs) Oh, we're fine now. And they're like, oh, the gingerbread man walked three feet. (laughs) Oh, so and like Steve was with us. I know that he. He hated the attraction. I don't. I don't necessarily hate the attraction for the video. I still think Shrek One is a great movie. It's a great animated. I like movie. Shrek Two better, but um, I. I but think, I would say after the second one, they definitely drop off. But still, Shrek is entertaining enough. Uh, the first two movies definitely on the good side. This is the the sequel to after the first one, but before Shrek it's got Two. John Lithgow. Uh, yeah, he still makes a comeback. The pre-show is entertaining with Pinocchio hanging upside down and. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm not wearing ladies' underwear. <laughs> Tell a lie. Tell a lie. Say <laughs> so you're wearing ladies' underwear. I'm not wearing ladies' underwear. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my God, this attraction! What yeah. a train wreck! Yeah. Just the seats. I would, uh, if I go back in it before it closes down, which it will close down eventually. I am going to have to stick to the stationary seats that they have for it. Uh, <laughs> My I, neck I just want to go in. The same. I want to go in with the, our uh, like the little recorder we have and just record the sound. I don't want to. I don't want to record the video or anything. I just want to get the sound of those chairs because it is literally. You'll be like something's breaking because it sounds like massive hoses are bursting everywhere and like you. I wouldn't. I want to overlay that with the sound of screams and just be like, this is the thing of nightmares. It, it really is. So I'm, it, it, every every piece of fat on every body was just, <laughs> it's just not, jiggling. I want to see the video, the dark the dark video that they watch and monitoring you. And all, Whoa. <laughs> it reminds me of Airplane 1 when they find out that the pilots are all sick and there's just a random pair of boobs that run past the screen <laughs> shaking. Like, that's what it reminds me of. And I just, Shrek. That's a big skip for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, <laughs> what were we doing? Oh, the Krinos. <laughs> what were we comparing it to? Uh, um, what were we comparing Shrek to? Uh, Nothing. He was anything. talking about the wait times. Oh, they were the wait times. The wait times. That's it. Yep. Yeah. yeah that, that, that's that, it was just all a tangent. Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. Well, we don't know that yet. We I don't know that. Yet. I don't know. No lines we don't know for Fallon. sure. No lines uh, for different reasons. So let's let's do the compare and contrast on the last big two things. Um, these are obviously the selling point for each, uh, both Universal and Walt Disney World, for why you should attend this summer. Probably will open up very similarly uh, right around the same exact time. And that, of course, is Disney will be opening Pandora, the World of Avatar, uh, the the highly anticipated, yeah. is it, uh, yeah. world being added to Animal Kingdom based on Avatar, that great movie that you have seen before, if you've ever seen Fern Gully, Pocahontas, uh, been kicked inappropriately outside. I d- it's it's everything. I'll watch the movie again before the before the I ride. I did. Opens. I did. It was bad. You watched it recently. It's bad. I haven't seen it since I saw it once in the theater, the and then when they, that advanced have Blu-ray they? came yeah. out, I got that one. The effects have aged not well. Ooh. It's been like six years. Maybe I'm remembering. I didn't it think the blue thing was better. I didn't think the blue things looked very good when I saw the movie to begin yeah. with, so I can't imagine I'm going to enjoy them much more now. No, it's uh, it's that effect. It's I feel like that time period 
is, and you can say this about every generation of CGI, but I feel like that time period, uh, the late 2000s, uh, right before it got into 2010s and such, is where they felt like, okay, we finally have CGI mastered. Yeah, I don't know how do, it can get we much can do better. worlds now instead of just a character. And that's when you get stuff that uh, people think is impressive looking, like Avatar, like Alice in Wonderland. And now you look back on it like, Ew, this is kind of... It all looks like Once Upon a Time. It's like the TV show budget of CGI. It's where just... I would say, I would I would even venture that Once Upon a Time looks better than those. Yeah, it's uh, not, not super great. Really big shoe. It's, really big show. It's not great. Animals. <laughs> Animals. Oh, is he doing his Eddie Redmayne? Yeah. <laughs> I just don't like people. I just don't like to look at the camera. I'll glance and, and look then they, you've got the loud. The loud guy's like, "What, Mister? Uh, Wizard, your eggs hatching." <laughs> and <laughs> on okay. on the other front, over at Universal, uh, they decided why just build a land? Why build a world when you could build a theme park? Oh yeah, yeah. That theme volcano park's bay, win. yeah, for sure. We, that, this is do we even need to vote on? This we don't even. Yeah, I was like, seriously, come on! And, and they just showed like new stills of Avatar Land recently with like James Cameron standing in there with Joe Rody or something, right? Within the last like month Joe or Rody, something. John Landau. The... Yeah, and you're, and I'm like, Pfft. it still looks. This looks even worse than the concept art. Yeah, and that makes me think uh, we because we haven't had a show since it during the uh, the Disney Christmas celebration that was no longer a parade but used to be. Um, they had the the brand new teaser for Avatar that you're talking about, where John Landau gets on there and says that there is no nothing this immersive in any theme park. And I was ready to throw my coffee at the TV when he said that. It's like you are such a freaking moron. It, you don't have to mention Universal. You don't have to mention Wizarding World of Harry Potter. You don't have to mention Springfield USA. But at least even mention Cars Land. It, your other park. Yeah, your own like, theme park that tries to be immersive. other theme park that made an immersive section. But now that you said that, let's still turn back and go look at Diagon Alley. And you actually try to tell me that Pandora is going to somehow be more immersive. It might be on the same level as immersion. It might be. But to me, it's still going to win one step up because then you have all the team members in there, the good ones. There will be a bad one here and there that are working to bring you into the story. To talk to you to ask you about your time as a muggle or if you are a wizard and you just got your wand they're trying to bring you into it to add that next level of dimension what the heck are they going to say in pandora welcome glad you're having a fun vacation here at whatever the world pandora yeah but it's like centauri vacations or something alpha oh, yeah, and yeah alpha centauri whatever something stupid yeah. like that oh hey where's welcome, the immersion humans. in there thanks for stealing all of our trees life i'm doing this on purpose for you <laughs> please <laughs> walk into our back section that we didn't copy off a of diagon alley where we make you think that yeah. or sorry after nocturne alley where we turn everything to night and you can see the bioluminescence <sighs> It's yeah, exactly Man. the feelings I have for it. So, I think it'll be a fine addition for Animal King. It'll be what it is, but it, it's not something that is a six year wait. And it's not something that it, sh- they need to lower their arrogance when it comes to it because they need to understand that it's not, it is what it is. Yeah. They built it. It's here. It is what it is. Yes. Volcano Bay, on the other hand, I'm very a very new water park. Mm. Especially for that drowning ride where they drown you and then drop you. <laughs> <laughs> a lot a lot of people did comment on to us though that they believe that we are reading into it a little too heavily and that they will not actually drown you because if everything went wrong, then that would probably be dangerous. Mm-hmm. I still think that someone out there really does want to drown you. Um, and I, I hope they do. I like that someone pointed out to us, like, come on, guys, they're not going to drown you. Yeah, no crap. We know they're not yeah. going to drown you. Thanks for that. We are aware like, how theme parks and the law of the United States we, of just, America work. We're just saying what it looked like, like, on the figures. It, it looked like you thought it looked like you. the prestige, and I am not going to be Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, it looked like some Houdini. Wait, is that style. who was in the tube? Scarlett Johansson was, right? It was Scarlett. Yeah, in, um, in Prestige. Yeah. The, she's the one they couldn't yeah. get out of the tank, yeah. Yeah. 
Spoiler alert. Crack, yeah. It's, I'm sorry. It's been out for only a couple of years. It's been about point. 10 years. Yeah, 11 years, I think, now. <laughs> um, it's, uh, and, you know, the, still for me, you know I don't like taking off my shirt, but I'm okay going going to Volcano Bay, being a part we'll, of this. We'll get some net shirts. I am shirts. open we'll to being shirts. drowned. I am ready to get drowned on that water slide. Waterboard go- me. It's going right. to be a good time. I'm looking very much forward to it. I'm at, now that uh, Wet and Wild closed. I'm very interested in seeing what slides are going to be transported over because uh, uh, if you've driven past Volcano Bay or any time <sighs> recently, you've noticed that the amount of slides they put in has <coughs> kind of come to a halt mm. because I think they are done with the original slides. Think they transport they, the other stuff over? Oh, yeah, they got it. They have to. I mean, some of the stuff was really new. It was only like yeah. a couple of years old. So, like the one, what was the Aqua Racers? They've yeah, got to be. Yeah, they were because really new. you know that's probably where they're probably going to use the slides that have the the light technology and stuff yeah. like that. Um, they're awesome as well. You go fast. <laughs> yeah, it, Volcano Bay is it, it's it's got to. I have high hopes for it. I have higher hopes for it than uh, the main attraction that's happening down the road with Pandora. But you know, I could be wrong. Maybe riding on some banshees will be will be amazing. Maybe riding on a little boat ride through might be fun. Um, but uh, Volcano Bay to me, there's there's an appeal about it. I want to. I've seen how Universal does theme parks. I'm now ready to see how they do water parks. And of course, that's it's not a it's not a complete jab at Disney. Um, it's a jab more at the property of Avatar than with what they do. Um, when Star Wars Land comes around, you know I'll be there with my hand high up in the air, volunteering to be first on everything. Um, you know, pushing people over if they try to get in front of me into attractions and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm very very excited for Volcano Bay, but I'm gonna miss Wet and Wild. Yeah, me too. I've got fond memories of Wet n' Wild. What was your best memory of Wet n' Wild? Um, I think one time I... Okay. Well, going back quite a few years, I was here on vacation with my family, and I think one time my mother left me in the wave pool, and I couldn't see her anywhere. Got 15 seconds, we got to okay, cut that over okay. for uh, copyright issues. Um... Where were you? Volcano. Actually, the best memory I've got of it is um, one of my... This is when I was very young. Um, I think I was only about five years old. And one of my brothers told me that a slide was something I could definitely do. It's like the corkscrew one. And I flew out the end and I smacked my head on the way down. And I was crying profusely when I came out. So that's my, my the most prominent memory I've got of Wet and Wild. How about you, Craig? I've never been. <laughs> I never went. You've never been? <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't like water parks anymore. Rhino? I like water parks. I never, I never went to that one. He, he never ventures outside the changing rooms. What I do in my free time <laughs> is my business. If that business is looking at other people's business. That's my business. How many times are you going to say business? <laughs> These four times a day. It's my word of the day calendar. Oh, the good. business calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know where you bought that. <laughs> Was it at a Walden Books? An Ocean State job lot, surprisingly. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very fun. All these bargain Walden outlets. books. Yeah, I went to there afterwards. It's where you can get your <laughs> your Spanish cereals. Oh, and uh, it was always the place where you could get like. Uh, um, Ill Lucky Charms or whatever. Like it was really Ill weird. Yeah, it was oh. terrible. They were clearly like not mark not written correctly for Spanish oh. people. I don't know. I'm, I'm Massachusetts so, is a weird place. So first, Rhino has offended I insulted the country sing, country, the country singers. singers, and now anyone of Spanish speaking origins. It's so okay. it's okay. Five, I, five seconds before Eli, he says, "I'm in a relationship Eli. with somebody." I'm in a relationship <laughs> with yes, Hispanic person. <laughs> He'll be just as upset as the rest of you. Don't worry. (laughs) Well, I'm going to go ahead and just bypass the vote and say that Volcano Bay wins the Crinos. So, um, gosh, this was a sweep. I mean, we we only had four categories this year, but Universal sweeped everything. Uh, We think that Universal... Uh, a celebration of Harry Potter. What you, why am I like channeling? Poor Alan <laughs> some Thick, of, rest uh, in peace. Poor Alan Thick. <laughs> um, what TV show did he? Oh gosh, so it's Growing terrible. Peace. Did you watch him on uh, Fuller House? 
No, but I saw that he oh, was in an episode. I yeah. saw. That. I haven't watched Fuller House. He yet. he was in an episode. He plays like a blind date kind of for DJ. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a good last way for for Alan Thicke to go out on, but that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, Alan Thicke. So a celebration of Harry Potter wins. Uh, Mardi Gras wins. Jimmy Fallon wins. I, I still disagree with that one. Beer. And Volcano Bay wins. So <laughs> that is the crying host. All awards going to Universal. I guess that makes sense for the Universal Edition podcast with a bunch of three Universal fans. So makes perfect sense here. We are going to talk about Secret Life of Pets today and the new float that debuted. But I think we're going to go ahead and skip that one because we're already running on the, the long side here. Um, and you know, we all, we just got sad after I will remember you. So we, we need to just, uh, we need to go leave, top to another pen. Remember on a happy, you have too many. He's about to turn into <laughs> Melissa McCarthy and bridesmaids. Yeah. Nine. I think, uh, six, six was probably my stopping point. It's just Nine. a lot of energy coming at you. A lot of energy. <laughs> God, I gotta watch that movie tonight now. That's, that's what I was watching on E whenever it went into, um, when the next thing up was Mariah Carey. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that nailed it. Um, okay, well, remember, uh, thank you guys. This was fun. I've laughed a lot. A good way to kick off 2017 with a bunch of ridiculousness and a tangent about boobs flying on Shrek. What more could you ask for? Boobs and beer on Shrek? <laughs> boobs, beer, and Shrek. <laughs> Sounds like a country song to me. So. Boobs, beer, and Shrek. <laughs> Thursday night. What the heck? <laughs> I'm going on a more roll right now. Oh, shoot. He's going. So I wanted you to just be able to like toss me a cowboy hat right there. And then I could put on. Out and thick ear. Props too. We need props. Props. <laughs> okay. So um, if for any information, uh, I don't. There's no information regarding anything we talked about in this show. Head over to disunplug.com for our show notes page where you'll find links to anything dealing with any of the shows on the Disunplug network, as well as links to social media, all that stuff. Um, oh resolutions should we take care of that next week yeah probably. yeah next week we'll yeah. do resolutions next week um don't worry uh we we will actually uh we we said since we went last year putting it off every week this year we will do resolutions so you'll see that coming uh next week make sure you're subscribed to us everywhere itunes youtube all that places talking to us you know we're lonely we need we need friends we need the attention um what else what else is happening hmm Video contributors. Oh, yeah. Remember, video contributors. Uh, we will start posting the links for all that so you can start signing up and sending us videos over so we can judge you profusely on that. I'm joking. <laughs> we won't judge you. Um, uh, but, well, I mean, we kind of have to in order well, to I get there. I was just going to say, that's a filter so, line. We, <laughs> absolutely yeah, we, we have to. Well, or we just will have no filter on that. But thank you guys so, so much. This was really fun. I'm glad to be back in 2017. We will be back with you next week. Hit the theme for another edition of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. Uh, until then, remember. 2017.